the 1880s, an entire region of the United States built upon the cornerstone of mining was coming to terms with its consequences. Hydraulic mining means that you create a dam and reservoir at a relatively high level in the Sierra, which it's ideally suited for, and then bring the water down in iron pipes under high pressure to where gold-bearing ancient rivers were buried and then release that water under high pressure with enormous water cannons called monitors or little giants. And you could just demolish the landscape at that time going for the gold in these buried rivers. Oh, the hydraulic mining, that was just so spectacularly ingenious and so astoundingly destructive. More than a century later, the scars of hydraulic mining remained etched in the landscape of the Sierra Nevada. But in 1884, as a federal court injunction effectively stopped the practice, hydraulic mining was also wreaking unprecedented havoc on San Francisco Bay. What happened was that a great sine curve, estimated at one and a half billion cubic yards of material, essentially was washed out of the Sierra, down into the rivers, into the delta, and then down into San Francisco Bay. And it's still coming down to this day. I think of it as the gift that keeps on taking, because in fact, what the mining companies were doing were sh was shifting their overhead onto the public, which has had to pay to try to stabilize these rivers ever since then with enormous levees and dredging. Hydraulic mining deposited as much as three feet of new sediment in the northern portions of San Francisco Bay. It also left the bay with one other pernicious legacy, the widespread presence of mercury. Mercury was essential to the process of separating gold from ore, and as chance would have it, a source was close at hand. In the hills above San Francisco Bay, near San Jose, the new Almaden mine would become the largest mercury mine in North America. We have mines in the coast ranges that are the cinnabar mines, mercury sulfide mines where the mercury was mined, and there's mining that was done in the Sierra Nevada region where that purified elemental mercury was used to extract gold and silver. The bay is still currently getting inputs from both of these types of mining regions. Today, the new Albanon mine's legacy endures in the name of the region's newspaper. And the mercury-laden sediments of the Guadalupe River that flow into San Francisco Bay. So the new Almaden mine actually sits right near the Guadalupe River. And right now, the Guadalupe River is in a state of emergency. I mean, basically, mercury pollutes the entire bottom of that river. And um, they have a separate cleanup plan just for that river because it is so contaminated. By the end of the 19th century, as much as 8 million pounds of mercury from New Almaden and the hydraulic operations in the Sierra Nevada were unleashed into the rivers of the San Francisco Bay watershed. It's actually amazing how well distributed mercury is. You can, you can measure mercury uh, pretty much everywhere we look. Mercury remains relatively harmless until the process of methylization occurs. Methylmercury, a neurotoxin, works its way into the food chain, accumulating in ever larger, ever more harmful quantities in ever larger organisms. And then it just moves up the food chain. And so anybody who's eating fish out of our bay is getting a dose of mercury every time they eat a large fish, like white croaker, halibut, or striped bass. Any of those bigger, bigger fish that they eat and they catch in the bay is going to have a large dose of mercury in it. 